heavily, heavily peated. In the first, it's very medicinal. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we have a, well, an unusual bottle. This one is from the independent bottler Signatory Vintage from the distillery Bunnerhaven and this time it's called Bunnerhaven Moin. M-O-I-N-E. What does that mean? So I googled it up and found out that Moin Thrust is a geological anomaly in the north of Scotland and it's approximately 110 miles long and reaches from the south of the Isle of Skye up to Loch Eribol in the north east Sutherland. And the name derives from Amoyne and this is uh, the name for moor moss in the north Sutherland. So I suggest that this whiskey is heavily peaty and uh, in former times the Buna Heaven with the strong peaty notes were called heavily peated as well as it was stated on the label. Let's have a look at the bottle and here it's said Buna Heaven Moin and uh, really heavily peated. Vintage 2008. Whoops! It's six years old. Distilled on February 7th 2008 and bottled in January 13, 2015. So we write uh, March 2015 in the moment. So this one reached me in two months from bottling. It's quite fast. Matured in a hogshead, cask number uh, 800,044. Too many casks for this distillery. So eight in front, I think, means or stands for 2008. And then they have five digits for the cask numbers. And this one is 44. Well, this matches. Um, but why not only 44? They will have bottled a lot more in 2008. Well, if you produce unpeated and peated whiskey or smoky whiskey in a distillery, uh, then you have to empty the complete chain uh, of all your equipment to get rid of the smoke, of the smoky character of the whiskey. Otherwise your normal whiskey will taste for the next two, three, five uh, uh, runs of your stills a little bit of smoke. Um, and there is those those intermediate receivers, they still they are always fed with the feints and there are oils in it. <clears throat> and uh, the feints which come out of the st uh, spirit still are uh, rooted into the uh, receiver and then they are put into the next still, the next run of the still again, so that they are catalytically converted into better compounds than those sharps sharp aromas of the feints and this goes on and on and on and this is the magic the conversion of the feints inside the copper pot stills so um, <clears throat> you have to empty that otherwise you will have always the uh, the peat smoke inside those intermediate receivers so drain it off clean it start again with the unpeated so they will have time of the year where they most of the time where they produce the unpeated and then part of the year where they produce the peated and they will have started perhaps early the year no yeah after the uh, holiday season when they started to run the, the story again with the peated whiskey probably so it's 44 casks <clears throat> 58.9 percent ABV quite strong 242 bottles out of this hogshead and this is bottle 104. It's undiluted, it's cask strength, but it's not or it's chill filtered, not unchill filtered. Smoky. Um, the 
there is no no proof that a an a chill filtered whiskey tastes less good than an unchill filtered one. We had a big, big uh, investigation or scientific research for this uh, chill filtration, and the result was it doesn't matter in, kind of in uh, terms of taste. Heavily, heavily peated. In the first, it's very medicinal. Ah, oh, lots of phenols. And then if you come closer and sniff deeper, then there's a little bonfire behind. So it's part this, part that. If you do not like this medicinal note, that's no whiskey for you. And a faint fruitiness, all is smoke, everything is smoke. And a little, very, very little vanilla and caramel coming up. So the Hawkshead is typically a reused cask and only six years in a reused cask light. And the distillery character is covered by all that smoke. Difficult. So, 58.9 is a lot above what I'm used to taste. <clears throat> uh, light, white wine, Gavi di Gavi. <laughs> so I doubt that this whiskey would be sellable in drinking strength, 43% ABV, to the normal audience. Well, you need specialists who say, well, I like a young whiskey. I want to have a, a taste of the distillery character, not disturbed by the cask. For me, it's very, very important that the cask has at least 50% influence of the taste of the whiskey. So this one is definitely too young for me. More fruitiness coming up. This is typical if you add, add water. To such a whiskey, still a lot of alcohol in it, and the cask is far, far behind. <sighs> Strong, heavy, but no youthness, no metallic note. This one had matured for a long, for an enough long time. Even this short time of six years, it's enough long to reduce this youthness to nothing. But it misses a little the cask. This one for me, this would be a perfect whiskey for a finishing put it in a sherry cask, put it in a sauterne cask. This would be a wonderful thing. Yeah, quite young, quite straight, not a bad one if you like <laughs> smoky whiskey. And uh, there's more to come. Feel free to come back and visit my next videos. Uh, and feel free to add your comments either here on YouTube, in our forum, or in our whiskey database on whiskey.com.